There's a way that people talk where it imagines that every life is kind of has an infinite horizon. If you've ever heard a graduation speech, it goes like that. It's a very, the world is your oyster and you, your job is to figure out how to choose from among infinite goods. And then of course, that's not true. You're locked inside your resources, your health, your body, your relationships, your zip code, your house your life. And so what began as what was supposed to be infinite choices is now you, is now me, stuck in this, in this body, in this room, in this life. There's a strange narrowing that happens, not just when tragedy strikes or like a pandemic, but um, when we realize that our finitude, that it was always going to be this way that we get little seasons where things open up and then whoo, they shrink. Somebody's sick, someone needs us to take care of us, them. Our bodies don't work like they hoped they would. We lose the job, the, the person. We lose the stuff that we, we can't build our lives without. And then we're here. What do we do now that we know? There is a tremendous temptation to go back to the infinite self to pretend that like this is the problem. The problem is this, is, is finitude. The problem is not feeling unlimited anymore. The unlimited version, it was, sorry, it was a fantasy. It's absolute crap. <laughs> Just as an intellectual argument. You were never gonna be young enough, wealthy enough, happy enough anything enough to secure that self. It was always gonna be this, less than we need. So what do we do now with this self? Can we have compassion for that person, for that self, that life? Now that we know what we know, can we learn to live here like this? I learned this quite dramatically <laughs> as a, as a historian who's an expert in cultural scripts of how people explain suffering, I knew everybody's solution, everybody's formula, everybody's self-help quick fix to how to live your best life now. And um, I thought I was like pretty compassionate about it. And then I was very suddenly diagnosed with cancer and then I was gonna die that year. And then I, and then I realized I was never above it, you know, like I wasn't above, I wasn't above that at all. Like I had my own version of being hooked on the idea that I was always going to be able to pick my life. And I was angry. I was like, I was like insulted that that wasn't going to be me. That's not been like the most fun part of this whole thing. <laughs> And I'm the last person to Brightside. The gift in it, and I will say gift, is in realizing that it was always going to be this way. Realizing that at some point we come to the end of ourselves. And we have to know, we have to learn to accept the parts of us that we're just never going to be um, that we're never gonna be able to fix it all, do it all. And there's no such feeling as um, a full, magical life. There's just this, our beautiful people that we love, our stupid hungers and ambitions and dreams, our amateur hobbies. There's no finishing this. But there is learning to live here with a little more grace, a little more love, a little more compassion. There is like a, a refining that can happen when we give up on our magical unlimited self.